Well, today Mark and I are down on the beach part of Carkeek Park in Seattle, Washington. So behind us is the sound, Puget Sound. And we want to talk about the four categorical sentence forms. So this is fundamental to categorical logic, also called sometimes called Aristotelian logic because this was the first branch of logic developed by Aristotle when he was writing the first textbooks in logical theory in recorded history, at least books that have survived for the historical record. So there are four categorical logic forms and I'm going to put one up and we're going to kind of talk about it and analyze it and we'll go through all four that way kind of informally. Is that all right? Yeah, let's do it. Okay. Yeah, let's so the first form is called the A form. In the Middle Ages, logicians assigned these four forms, the letters A, E, I, and O. And so we'll stick with that. The A form is a sentence of the form all blanks are blanks, where the blanks are filled in with names of groups, in other words, group nouns. And for example, all cats are mammals. And so this is called a categorical sentence. In general, a categorical sentence is any sentence that asserts that either all or none or some of a group either belong to or don't belong to another group. Mm -hmm. So this says all the members of the group of cats belong to the group of mammals. And so we, we're interpreting this as saying all this, members of this group belong to this group. That's how we interpret this. And uh, the word all is called a quantifier word. The word cats is the subject term of the sentence. And the word mammals is the predicate term of the sentence. Notice that the subject term is the name of a group. The predicate term is the name of a group. And then R is called the copula because it joins the subject and predicate terms and asserts, in this case, this, the word R asserts that, every, that these members belong to this group and this says all of them do. Now, what, what is this called? An A statement. Yeah, we also call it... It's a, a universal affirmative yes. categorical statement. And why statement. do we call it a universal affirmative? Well, there's two kinds of statements. There's universal and negative. Uh, this would be an example of a universal, uh, universal statement because it's making a claim about every single one of the members in the subject term. Mm -hmm. So if we're saying all dogs are animals or all cats are mammals, we're making a universal claim about every single cat in the universe. Every single one of them would be inside the mammal category. So it's called a universal statement. Universal, yeah. uh -huh. And it's called an affirmative statement. Why? Because I'm actually saying that every single cat is indeed a mammal. Later on in a moment, you're going to talk about negative statements. No. Um, no S or P, that would be saying every single one of the subject term is not in the, pre in the predicate term. In this case, we're affirming that every single member of the subject term is indeed in the predicate term. Okay. Or the class denoted by the predicate term. Yes. <clears throat> Let's take this sentence. So now we have another categorical, and uh, the word no is a quantifier word. The word cats is the subject term, the word reptiles is the predicate term, the copula is R, and we interpret this sentence in logic as saying that none of the members of this group belong to this group. And so this is designated the E type of categorical. And why is it called the universal negative? I guess again, every single member of the belongs to the subject term, or denoted by the subject term cats, is not in the reptile group because no cats are reptiles, so it's universal. So making a claim about all of them. This will become clearer once we get to the particular statements where the claim is saying it just at least one cat is not a reptile or is a reptile. But here we're saying all the cats are not reptiles, or in proper form, no cats are reptiles. Mm -hmm. We should probably also point out that the subject term and the predicate term may not be a single word. We could have no black cats are reptiles, and the subject term would consist of two words, mm -hmm. but it would still be a single term. Yeah. No, black cats are reptiles that roam in the middle of the night looking for food. Mm -hmm. Well, reptiles roaming in the middle of the night looking for food would be one term, although it's many words. One predicate It's still going to be mm -hmm. one group noun or a plural noun of mm -hmm. some sort, noun phrase. Mm -hmm. Right. So then to sum up, 
the words all and no qu count as quantifiers and they are called universal quantifiers and they're universal quantifiers because they're talking about all the members of the group the predicate or the subject group mm -hmm. because all talks about all cats no also talks about all cats since it says none of them belong mm -hmm. and then in this case we have a an affirmative copula don't we because we're saying these members belong to that group and so we call it an affirmative sentence that's its quality in this case the copula is called a negative copula because it says these don't belong it denies membership in this group so this is a negative so the quantity is universal the quality is affirmative here and negative here negative because it says these don't belong okay mm -hmm. so then the I sentence uh, some cats are pets how's that so the subject term is cats predicate term pets quantifier now is this word some and the copula are and this is called an I categorical sentence and we interpret this as saying some members of the cat category belong to the pet category where the word sum is defined in logic as what? It's at least one. Yes, the word but sum just means at least one or one or more. That's a stipulative definition. Yeah. Well, this would be then a particular claim. Particular claims oftentimes starting with the word sum, but there may be other words in ordinary language, but the standard form would have some indicating particular. It's only making a claim about at least one cat, not every single one of the cats as these two claims would have. Mm -hmm. So this is a particular quantifier. Mm -hmm. Also sometimes called an existential quantifier, by the way. So we call this, the quantity then is particular or existential, and it just means that we're asserting that some of the subject category, and then, or saying something about some of the mm -hmm. subject category. And then is this affirmative or a negative copula? Well, it's affirmative. Mm -hmm. We're justifying some cats are indeed pets. At least one cat mm -hmm. is indeed a pet. Yeah, so we're saying these belong to, so it's an affirmative. And so this is called a particular affirmative categorical sentence because it talks about some of the subject category and it says they belong to, so it's particular affirmative. Mm -hmm. And let's get this in before the train comes. You want to? Good. Some cats are not pets. Think of wild lions or something. So this will be particular or feral again. Cats. Or feral cats. Uh, at least one cat, this, this statement's claiming, is not a pet. Uh, so it's particular. It's not making a claim about every single cat either being or not being a pet, just at least one cat being a pet. So this will be particular. We know it's negative because we have the copula here are not. Some of the cats are not inside the pet category. And so it's a, it's a, a, a particular or existential quantity and a negative copula. And we've got a train. And that is uh, Burlington Northern train. Well, I think we've got everything here, haven't we?